Welcome to C Programming Tutorials. Uh, if you haven't uh, subscribed to the channel, I would highly recommend that you do so. Uh, this way, if, uh, if uh, you will be notified as soon as I um, as I post any new tutorial, you know, from your subscription, you will be able to access the, all the tutorials as well. Uh, anyway, so let's get started. In today's tutorial, we are going to learn about how to actually pass the um, the arrays to to functions as parameters so we have been doing many tutorials in the past about functions um, we basically learned what functions are how to write the functions um, uh, how to call functions we basically saw how to pass parameters to function and we saw how to pass parameters as pointers to function and today's tutorial we are going to learn about passing um, arrays to the functions as uh, as parameters so let's get started. So um, let's let's see. So we know that how how we can define an array, right? We have basically learned about it in the previous tutorials. And again, if you haven't watched those, please please do watch watch those tutorials. So if you have to define say an integer, you define it like this, right? And if you have to initialize it, you basically initialize it like this. And if you have to define an array of integers you define it like uh, like this you basically you know what you do is you um, you define uh, you write int then the array name and then you specify the size which basically says how many elements of this type uh, integer type in this case uh, are there in that array so this creates an array of uh, of hundred integers and it's it's not a good idea to define an, uh, uh, a, such a big array uh, inside the function like this. We will learn later on in some future tutorial how to basically, if you really have to create a, an array of hundred integers, you don't do this. Uh, you basically do something else. Uh, you know, we will we'll learn uh, about it later. But you know, for now we we know that you know, if you have to define an array, you could define an array like this. Okay. Um, now, if you have to pass a Access parameter, you just basically, you know, just uh, pass it as as the as the parameter. We will we we learn how you could you could do it in the past tutorials. But if you have to pass the arrays, we will see how you declare the function so that it can accept the arrays here. Okay. So, but before we do that, let's 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 try to do some kind of uh, some. Let's write a simple program. Okay. What does that program do? It the program actually computes the total number of uh, uh, days in in a year okay very simple and the way it does it it basically uh, it base we we already are going to hard code the number of days in every month okay given the number of days in each month how many days are there in in the whole year okay very simple right so f first thing that we have to represent is what's going to be the data that th this particular program is going to use okay think about it what is it it's basically what is the input kind of you know what what is it it's basically the number of days in each of the month okay and there are how how many months uh, uh how many months are there in in a year there are 12 12 months in a year number of days in each month you know some of them uh, uh, each of the month uh, uh, each of the months is basically uh, some of them is um, um, 30 days, some of them 31 days, some of them you know one of them is at, is actually 28 days. Um, so, but they are all integers. So we have to basically represent these 12 integers, you know, one for each month. So how do we do that? Obviously, you know, first thing that comes to mind is basically you cannot do it in just one in one integer, or you don't want to define, declare twelve different integers. You know, that's not going to be a good program. So what do we do? We basically create. You know, we have to store twelve integers. When you have to store multiple of the same type values, what do you do? You basically create an array of that type. So what we are going to do? Obviously, we are going to basically create an array of integers. And what are we going to name it? Since it represents the number of days, we let's call it n days, right? Number of days. And how many of those? Twelve, because there are twelve months in a year. So there will be twelve uh, such values, you know, one for each 
month okay so this is how you we are we are going to declare those those months now where are those uh, days gonna come from we are going to hard code them hard code means you know you write something you assign a value into the program itself you know that's hard coding okay that's basically you know it's not gonna change as the program runs so you just hard code it and you know, right there so one thing would be you could ask the user to enter it but you know since it's a fixed value it cannot change January always have 31 days it's not gonna be 30 days one one year you know 20 days next year or something like that so so it, values which are not going to change you should hard code in the program itself and one way to do it is basically right at the time of initialization of the array and I have I don't think I've ever mentioned this before but you could initialize an array uh, right at the time when you declare it just like you can initialize an integer like this you could basically initialize an array like this okay like braces start and braces close between this you can write all the values of each each one of these elements here so there are 12 elements and each one of them is actually an integer so we basically write this uh, the number of days for each of those um, elements so wh what is the what is the how many days are there in January 31 okay and then separate them back comma so 31 is gonna go into the first element of this array and what's the index of that element it's basically zero so n days of zero n days sub zero is basically it's going to become 31 okay and then for February it's usually 28 okay for this year it was 28 definitely and then March 31 April 30 May 31 June 30 July 31 August 31 September 30, October 31, November 30, December 31. See? January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. So we have all of them right there. Okay? And we declare this in this uh, array. And, and what's going to happen when the compiler is going to see this? Compiler is going to allocate, you know, is going to generate a code that will be allocating the me this much memory in the computer how much e equivalent to enough to store 12 integers okay and then in the first location it's going to write 31 the next location it's going to write 28 and it's going to write 31 in the next location and so on and it will initialize it right then and there okay and then now that we have this thing what are we gonna do what do we want to do with these numbers these are all the number of days each one of them is basically the number of days in the corresponding month so what we are going to do we are going to basically add them all together okay but for that to add all the all of them together to to get the what are, what is our purpose the purpose is to basically uh, figure out the number of days in a year okay and what are we gonna do with this we are going to basically write a function that will basically do this job do this job of adding all these numbers together okay so what are we gonna call that function I don't know um, I don't know like maybe compute days in a year okay and what are we going to do? We are going to pass. Let, let's stop here because we are running out of time and we'll continue this in the next video. Thank you so much.